Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has faced fierce criticism as Manchester United's manager since taking over in the caretaker role back in December 2018, some rightly and some wrongly. But Solskjaer has grown in his role as United's manager. I don't think anybody could really argue against that. And in this video, I want to show and explain how his rhetoric and his language and his mannerisms have changed from 2018 through to 2021 to represent that shift in change that we're seeing with United on the pitch. Now this is a bit of a deeper video, a bit of a longer video, so make sure you watch it all. I think it's important to really understand all of these. And make sure you drop a like on the video, it does help. But I want to run through what I consider the stages of Solskjaer's growth as United's manager over the last three years. And it all goes back to 2018 and what I consider stage one Solskjaer, the man who loved talking about DNA and the culture of Manchester United. When Solskjaer became United's manager, he almost spoke exclusively in cliches. Like Take these, for example, when he joined in, talking about the importance of youth at United. As Sir Matt Busby once said, if they're good enough, they're old enough. And we know that's true, but hearing Solskjaer say at that point, it's kind of why he was labelled a PE teacher, because he was speaking in cliches. And here again, on coming back to United, he talks about the personality. It's ingrained in you. I understand the club. I'm finding the right players. It's about finding the players with United's identity. And hearing Solskjaer speak in sort of empty cliches at that point, it felt like he was almost reading from a United history book because the football on the pitch did not represent the words that Solskjaer was saying. Now, that is the path that every United fan wanted us to go down, but to hear Solskjaer say at that point, it seemed like he was a man who didn't know what he was doing, and it was a man who thought, if I just say these things, I'll keep the United fans on side. But ultimately, it helped inspire that three-month turnaround at the beginning. Because to go from Van Hal to Mourinho and then to Solskjaer would have been a breath of fresh air for a lot of those United players. Pobble was one of the best players in the world at that point, and United's form surged for three months. But of course, it was not enough to just do that. And during those first few months when Solskjaer was up against the ropes, like after the first game against PSG, this cliche he's caught came out saying about mountains are there to be climbed, aren't they? Almost sounded like a motivational speaker. And sometimes at that point, Solskjaer was a bit too honest as United manager. Here saying this back in December, saying that we're not a Man City, we can't play out play and out football teams. At that point, it was completely true. But to hear a United manager say it in public, it's not what United fans need to hear. And at a time where Solskjaer was trying to get fans on board, that was distancing him further from fans. And after the initial buzz of those three months, United had a huge dip. Solskjaer was given the job on a full-time basis, I thought prematurely at the time. But if stage one was all about the DNA and the culture of the club, stage two was next. And that was all about rebuilding the foundations. And where does that start? That starts with the squad. As Solskjaer put it when he was speaking in January 2020, when you rebuild a house, you rebuild the whole thing. You knock it all down. You don't just put a new roof on it. And for me, this is something that Solskjaer, I believe, has done very well since he joined as United's manager. He did it immediately by getting rid of Mauro and Fellaini in January. But then the following summer was the beginning properly of Solskjaer's rebuild of that squad. And look at the players that left. Lukaku. I never thought he was a real United player, if I'm being completely honest. Smalling leaving on loan. Darmian. Young. Valencia released. Solskjaer was moving on players he didn't see that were part of United's future and bringing in players that he would consider to be central parts. Wan-Bissaka, he's certainly growing in his role at right back. And Maguire, the, the jury's still out on him. Certainly overpaid, but the jury is still out on whether Maguire's going to be there in the long term. But Solskjaer followed that up in the next year or so. Obviously, Bruno Fernandes came in in January and he's the man that's been the catalyst for all the change on the pitch. But around that as well, look at many players that left during the summer. Smalling left on a permanent deal. Sanchez released, that's a huge thing. Andres Pereira loaned out. Delot loaned out. Borthwick Jackson released. Then the players you've got that we, we signed, questionable. Whether any of them are really going to have a long-term future at the club. Van der Beek, he hasn't hardly played. Cavani is a mint signing, but he's only going to be here for a short amount of time. Maybe another year or so. And Tellez, let's be honest, he's been quite poor. Uh, then you look at who the players that in January. Lingard, loaned. Rojo, sold. Again, Solskjaer moving on the players that he didn't see having a future in the club. And as Solskjaer put it in January 2020, he'd rather have a hole in the squad than an asshole. And all of this has allowed a shift in the squad mentality, which I will get into in a bit more depth later in this video. But just like talking about the DNA and the culture and rebuilding, neither of those two stages on their own are good enough for the rebuild of Manchester United. 
And that's where stage three comes into it. Because to grow in life, you have to make mistakes and learn from them. And Solskjaer has certainly made plenty of those in his time as United's manager. As I said, Solskjaer really has fallen plenty, at least not in all the semi-finals that he has lost as United's manager, which is a bat that so many people hit him with. But this is a crucial point I really want to make about Solskjaer as United's manager, because for me, in my opinion, Solskjaer has been edging towards a sack on two occasions. Once was in January 2020, and that was after the 2-0 defeat to Burnley at home. Old Trafford was emptying before full time. There were boos. That was when there was a real bad feeling. And for me, that's probably still the lowest point for Solskjaer as United's manager. And then also in December that year as well, after the defeats to Arsenal, to Istanbul, to Leipzig, the draw against City, the feeling was again bad. But something that happened on both occasions, the players rallied behind Solskjaer and United players really got behind their manager and turned it around for him. And I don't think that's something that really properly happened under Mourinho, or you could say that under Van Howlett, everybody's pulling in the same direction. And the reason that exists is because stage one and stage two have happened, the DNA and culture and the rebuild. Solskjaer has started to build a squad around him that's with the culture that he wants at United. And because of that, everybody's pulling in the same direction. At the points where Solskjaer is on the brink, everybody's there pulling him back and pulling United back. And that, for me... The only reason Solskjaer survived those two occasions is because of the foundations that he set beforehand. And I also think that's a huge reason why United have built a habit now of winning from losing positions in the Premier League, certainly away from home. It's happened too often now for me to consider it a coincidence in the same way that United scoring late under Fergie was a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence. It was just a habit that we built that we were never, ever down no matter what time it was in the game and how many goals we were down. And I think that, again, is another symbol of the shift in the mentality of the squad. But stage one, if that's all about the DNA and the culture in stage two, for me, is all about the rebuild of the club in terms of the squad. And stage three is all about the rise and the fall and, and coping with that. Stage four, that's the stage we're currently seeing at the moment. And that is the stage of progression. Because instead of heading back down the hill after coming up it again, which is what we did after that surge. Look, we had the surge at the start with three months under Solskjaer, then we went down the hill and we struggled for a long time to get back up that hill. After the Burnley game, we rallied again, but then we dipped again. This time, we're rallying and we're, we're not dipping off hugely. Now, obviously we did with the Sheffield United game and the Arsenal game, so in that sense, you might say that I'm lying, but I, I don't think, I think we're seeing a progression here. We're four points ahead of Liverpool. We're second in the league and we are seeing the best United team on the pitch in the last six, seven years. Even when we were second under Mourinho, we were still how many points behind? Jesus, we weren't anywhere near a title race. Yes, we're still not going to win the Premier League, in my opinion. I think that's City, and we're, they're still heavy favourites. But if they slip up, United are there to take advantage of the opportunity. And stage four, for me, is that progression of mentality that I think we've seen under Solskjaer, which is now being represented in the football, I think, that we're playing. And that shift in mentality, for me, is a crucial stage of, of part four. Bruno Fernandes is... is the general, Solskjaer's general on the pitch. What Solskjaer is trying to achieve off of it, Bruno is trying to achieve on it. And they complement each other well in that respect. And if Bruno Fernandes had come in, in the summer, maybe we would be a few months further down the line than we are at the moment. But we're certainly, in terms of the, the, the way that the club is, in terms of the way that the squad is, we're in the best position we are in seven years. And speaking about that shift in mentality, this is what Solskjaer said at the beginning of January. He said, look, definitely there's been a shift. Uh, talking about a couple of players being older, talking about the players like Mata and Matic who are used to winning, about the influence of them. He, re he refers to the, the privilege of playing for United again, but because of where we are now and because of how much better we are, it's not just empty cliches. That shift in mentality for me is a huge part of stage four. But this is far from the end of the journey. These are all just preconditions for the only measure of success that will ever be upheld at United. And that is trophies. That is silverware. And that is what Solskjaer has to do next. And this season we've got, I would say, two opportunities for it. We've got the Europa League and we've got the FA Cup. We're not living without the FA Cup, so we're still in that. That is what Solskjaer has to do now. Otherwise, stages one, two, three and four becomes slightly irrelevant. They will, If stage five doesn't happen, my initial thoughts about Solskjaer as manager will be proven correct. And that would be 
that Solskjaer will leave United in a better position for whoever comes in next to succeed in. But I didn't think he, would, he was going to be capable of winning us the trophies that we want. Now, the Europa League and the FA Cup are not the trophies we want. We've won that, both of those, since Fergie and the League Cup too. It's the Premier League and the Champions League that have eluded us. Now, we're still in a title challenge. I don't think we're in a title race at the moment because I think City are far and away the best team in this league at the moment. But United are there if they slip up and we can take advantage of that opportunity, maybe if it comes to us. But the Europa League and the FA Cup, maybe they can be just the catalysts because so many of these players are winners, but none of them have tasted winning under Solskjaer. And winning trophies was the diet that Fergie fed his United teams over the decades. And that was just a consistent diet that he managed to rebuild so many times. And that's, that's the food, the diet, the taste that Solskjaer has to get his players hungry for. And you can only do that if you win one. Now, obviously, we've lost four semi-finals. Let's go and see what happens next. I don't think that's a real evidence of a, of a bottling manager and a, and a mentality that is just incompatible with winning trophies. I disagree with that. You might not, but that's your own opinion. I hope that we can win the Europa League or the FA Cup. I think I'd rather win the Europa League. I think winning the European trophy is just it's so much sexier. It's better, it's better than the FA Cup. Uh, but beyond that stage five of winning titles and trophies is stage six. And only one manager has ever managed to do that. And that was Sir Alex Ferguson. And that is maintaining because winning is one thing. Retaining is another thing. And Fergie was the genius who managed to not only do that, on more than one occasion, he did it over a span of 20 years with completely different teams, completely renewed and refreshed, and he kept that energy and that drive up. Ask Jurgen Klopp in Liverpool this year about how difficult retaining the Premier League title is. But Solskjaer, for me, he's grown as a manager. He was a PE teacher at the start when he came in and he spoke in empty cliches and he didn't back it up with any sort of real... You didn't know what the style of United was. You didn't know whether you... You still don't really know what you're going to get from United. So that, I'm not saying that Solskjaer and United are the complete, complete... So I'm not saying that Solskjaer and United are the complete article because they're not. We're still capable of games like Sheffield United, like Arsenal. And uh, therefore, we can't be considered the finished article because teams like City won't do crazy results like that. Or maybe they will at some points this season. But that is where Solskjaer, for me, has grown as a manager. He's shifted from that rhetoric of the DNA and the culture. He's gone through the rebuild. He's gone through the rise and the falls and, and learning from those mistakes. And, and I think we're currently in stage four, which is progression. And we're getting towards that stage five. But stage five and six are the two stages that Solskjaer hasn't got to yet. And that is the only measure of success as Manchester United's manager. That's why so many people still doubt Solskjaer. And why so many people will always doubt Solskjaer until he wins those titles and trophies. But Ole will absolutely know that. But with the shift in mentality that we've seen in this squad, I think United on the pitch is in the best possible place that we have been in the last seven years to get towards those titles and trophies which have eluded us since Fergie left. That's my own opinion. You might disagree on that. It's a longer video, this one. Quite a lot of research gone into it. Shout out to Joe on Discord for helping with some of that research and make sure you join our Discord server. There's a link in the description if you want to get involved. But for me, that's the stages of Solskjaer's growth as United's manager from 2018 when he took over as caretaker manager to where we are now. Let me know what you think about those stages, whether you think I'm right or wrong, anything I've missed out. Let me know in the comments below. But if stages one to four have happened over these three years, what we have to see from now is stage five and that's winning titles and trophies. This season, we're somehow still in, the, in a Premier League race. Let's see what goes on there. But the Europa League and the FA Cup, they're two key opportunities I don't think Solskjaer really wants to miss out on because going into next season, if we can do it with a piece of silverware under our belts, United will be in a fantastic position to really challenge if we can have a good summer. But let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Until next time, though, take it easy.